Hello and welcome to video lecture series in sociology. Today we are going to discuss from your textbook Social Change and Development in India, Chapter 3, titled as The Story of Indian Democracy. This chapter is broadly divided into four parts. The first part deals with understanding the concept of democracy. The second part deals with constitution of India, its core values and the procedure of making of the constitution. The third part deals with the practicing of democracy at the grassroots level, that is in the form of Panchayati Raj system in India. And the fourth and the final part deals with the role of political parties and the pressure groups in a democracy. So far we have learned about the distinct ways and lasting consequences of the colonial experience. Through processes of structural and cultural transformation, this experience had been significant in shaping political, economic, social and cultural landscape in India. In this context, today we will discuss the story of Indian democracy. To understand democracy, let us begin by defining what is meant by democracy. Democracy comes from a Greek word, demos and the kratos, that is the mob, demos means the mob and the many and kratos means the rule. Democracy is defined as a government in which the supreme power is vested in the people. It is defined as a form of government in which people have an equal say in the decisions that affect their lives. Democracy allows people to participate equally either directly or through elected representatives in proposal, development and creation of laws. We come across the concept of democracy in everyday life. Democracy may be a familiar word to most of us, but it is a contested concept. As there are many forms of democracy and many variants of democracy being practiced all over the world. But from where did the concept of democracy originate? Is it a modern phenomena? or democracies existed earlier also. It may not be the way in which we understand democracies in the modern time, but democratic ideas certainly have prevailed in history. It appears in the description of many ancient civilizations. Let us look at the history briefly to find when and where these ideas appeared. The first usage of the word is found in Greece. It appeared in the ancient Greek political and philosophical thought in the city-state of Athens. Athenians established what is assumed as the first democracy around 500 BCE. The idea or philosophy behind this was that a good government is formed with the consent of people or the masses. The second usage of the term is found in Roman Republic, later in English, Dutch and American Republics. During this era, it was thought that good government is a mix of ruling minority and majority that is the masses. But the democratic element or people's consent could actually give greater power to the state. The third usage is found in the events of French Revolution and the writings of many philosophers of Enlightenment era such as Rousseau. During this era, it meant that everyone else, regardless of education or poverty, has a right to make his will felt in the matters of public concern. In modern times, democracy appeared in the constitution of many West European nations in the 19th century. Later on, it appeared in many newly independent nations after the Second World War. Democracy meant that all the people can participate in political processes of a nation. But they must mutually respect the equal rights of fellow citizens within a regulatory legal framework that defines, protects and limits those rights. Democracy in modern societies got established as a consequence of long struggle by French Revolution. French revolutionaries sought to replace the ancient regime, that is the old order, with a new political, social and cultural structure. What is ancient regime or what was the nature of ancient regime? Ancient regime, also called as old regime, is a social political system which existed in most of the European countries during the 18th century. The countries were ruled by absolutism, which means the monarch had absolute control over the government. The French society was divided into three estates. What were these estates? These were called as the first estate, second estate and the third estate. The first estate was a minority comprising of Roman Catholic clergy. The second estate, also a minority, consisted of nobles. 
The third estate included everyone else in the society, that is the masters, serfs, peasants, laborers, workers and all. The people belonging to first and second estate were privileged groups, as they did not pay any taxes and were treated well. The masters of the third estates were the unprivileged groups. They paid heavy taxes and were exploited. In spite of the fact that minority as compared to the majority was a small percentage of total population of France, each estate had one vote. You may ask a question here that what was the nature of government under the old regime? Under old regime, France was a monarchy. The monarch ruled by divine right. What does divine right of monarch or divine right of a king means? The divine right is a set of ideas wherein it is believed that the God has put the world in motion. Power is given by God. God has put some people in positions of power and no one can question God. No one can question someone put in power by God. The king has been given power by the God and questioning the king or the monarch was a blasphemy because it meant questioning the God himself. So what did the king do to rule? The king appointed the officials who governed France's 30 districts and also appointed the people who would collect taxes for state and carry out his laws. The king controlled justice by appointing judges and controlled the military as well. He decided about imposing all taxes and decided how to spend the collected money or the revenue. Interestingly, the king could imprison anyone at any point of time for any given reason. He made all laws and decisions regarding war, peace and punishments. The economic conditions too prevailing in France were pathetic under the old regime. France's economy was based primarily on agriculture and the peasants bore the heavy burden of taxation. Interestingly, as we have discussed earlier, during this time, intellectual and philosophical revolutions had started to challenge the old order in Europe. What happened during this time? Scientists during this time had started discovering laws that governed the natural world. So similarly, intellectuals or sociologists to say, began to ask if natural laws might also apply to human beings, particularly to human institutions such as the government. These philosophers were secular in their thinking. They used reason and logic rather than faith, religion and superstition to answer important questions. They attempted to find out what logical rational principles work to tie people to their governments and how good governments can be formed. Most importantly, they questioned the divine rights of the king. Such ideas led to political turmoil in France and after many upheavals, ups and downs, this led to establishment of democracy and abolished monarchy forever. The story of French Revolution begins when in May 1789, in an effort to raise taxes, King Louis XVI convened the Estate General. Estate General was the assembly representing the entire French population through these three groups known as estates. The third estate in France demanded sweeping political and social reform, but the other two estates resisted this. On 20th June 1789, the third estate withdrew itself from the Estates General and declared itself as National Assembly. The National Assembly decided not to disband until France had a written constitution. In August 1789, the National Assembly issued the Declaration of the Rights of Man and the Citizen. It proclaimed the equality of all men, declared that sovereignty resided in the people, and it asserted individual rights to liberty, prosperity and security. In fact, it was influenced by American Revolution and Declaration of Independence in America. The Declaration of Rights of Man included many important things, such as freedom of religion, freedom of speech, freedom of the press. It guaranteed property rights to people. It talked about right of the people to create laws and right to a fair trial. And finally, liberty, equality, fraternity became the motto of the National Assembly. The reforms of the National Assembly reconfigured or restructured French society forever. How did it do or what kind of changes came about? The first important change was that it ended the fees and labor services the peasants owed to the landlords. Second, it seized the church's land or the property. It abolished the first estate and defined clergy as civilians. Now clergy as civilian was required to take an oath of loyalty to the state. 
and men of property, those who held property, could vote for legislators. Among many events as part of French Revolution, later a convention was established, which was a new legislative body elected by universal male suffrage. The convention abolished the monarchy and proclaimed France as a republic. It made the king the chief executive, but deprived him of legislative authorities. France became a constitutional monarchy and the king and the subject relationship under a monarchy was replaced by state and citizen in democracy. The French Revolution with many upheavals and eventful turns has sown the seeds of democracy in modern societies. Since then, despite continuing challenges, democratic governments continue to evolve and flourish throughout the world. Democracy has evolved through a long history full of crisis, unrest, bloodshed. It is now a set of ideas and principles about freedom. You must also remember here that freedom and democracy cannot be used interchangeably. The concepts are important, but they are not the same. Understand this, that in a democracy, freedom along with equality and liberty is guaranteed to the citizens. Democracy is popularly now known as a government of the people, by the people and for the people. Let us discuss what are the core characteristics of democracy. Democracy is a government in which power and civic responsibilities are exercised by all adult citizens directly or through their freely elected representatives. Democracies rest upon the principle of majority rule and individual rights. The next important feature of democracy is that democratic societies are committed to the values of tolerance, cooperation and compromise. The third important characteristic is that democracies understand that one of their prime functions is to protect basic human rights such as freedom of speech and religion, the right to equal protection under law and the opportunity to organize and participate in the political, economic and cultural life of a society or a nation. Next, democracies also conduct regular free and fair elections open to citizens eligible for voting. Citizens in a democracy have not only rights, but the responsibility to participate in the political system. That in turn protects their rights and freedoms. Democracies guard against all powerful central governments. They decentralize government to regional and local levels, understanding that all levels of government must be as accessible and responsible to people as possible. Democracy is of two types, direct and representative. In a direct democracy, all citizens without the intermediary of elected or appointed officials can participate in making public decisions. Such a system is practically only with a relatively small number of people, like a small community organization or tribal council. Or for example, the local unit of a trade union where all the members can meet together at one place to discuss issues and arrive at decisions by consensus or majority vote. Modern societies with their size and complexity cannot practice direct democracy. Today, the most common form of democracy is representative democracy, whether for a town of 50,000 or a nation of billion plus population. In a representative democracy, citizens elect officials to make political decisions, formulate laws, and administer program for public good. India is a representative democracy. Every citizen has the important right to vote for his or her representative. People elect their representatives to all the levels from panchayat, municipal boards, state assemblies, up to the parliament. To conclude, let us summarize what we discussed today. We began our discussion by understanding meaning and features of democracy. Then we discussed about the rise of democracy in modern times particularly looking at the main events of French Revolution, which led to abolishment of monarchy and establishment of democracy. In the next part of this chapter, we will discuss about democracy and making of constitution in India. Till then, you can enjoy reading this part of the chapter. Mm -hmm.